There's so many things to talk about why I love this area. Uh, one is in the incredible natural resources. The water, the trees like this along the creeks, the mountain views, and I, and I also love the people. I've, you know, I've been here a long time, so I have a lot of friends and, and um, colleagues and people I've been lucky to work with, and, and they're very dedicated to this place, this community, both the natural community and the, and the people in the small towns, and, um, and, and I really enjoy that. We love the community so much. We've, you know, looked at it from a lot of different ways. Like, why is why is this area so special about that? And I think the thing that we've come back to a lot is like there are a lot of, you know, locals who've been here for many generations, but there's a lot of new people too. And my other favorite thing is 6:30 at night, seven o'clock, when the sun's just hit behind the mountains, the shadows fall in. Um, you know, on the other side of the valley, it's a little little dusky, a um, little pink. And I'm just, I just go, you know, that's why we live here. You know, that's, that's why we want to have our family here. Of course, just kind of like everybody else, I love the mountains. I love the cooler climate. I can't take heat very well. There's no place closer to heaven than being on a horse moving cows in the mountains. Yeah, my whole life has been a culmination of trying to get to wild places, to places where I could go see wildlife, and Salida and this central Colorado, this valley, they offer so much of that right out our back door. And it's the people, they all come here for that. There's communion in that. And all those things together are just had in spades here. And there just couldn't be a better place to bring all those things together, celebrate them and try to protect them. It's easy to gravitate to the to the natural environment and looking at this landscape and saying, "Yeah, this this is what I what I truly love most." And it's it's certainly inside there. You know, we're we're in such a a changing world right now, and the American West, especially the Rocky Mountain West, is going through incredible demographic change. And there's a certain character, a certain rural character, a raw uh, Western character out here in these communities of Salida. Buena Vista, Leadville. It's still a place where people can call back to multiple generations. People know each other, they'll say hello to you on the street, they'll smile, you can stop, you can chat a little bit, talk about whatever's going on in this community or, or just really whatever you, whatever you want. People have time for, for that, to be a little human here. And as a, as a transplant from the front range, you know, I'm one of those statistics here in Chaffee County as you see the trajectory going up with, with population growth. It's wonderful to be a part of that human community. And it, we can do it in a, in a beautiful landscape. That's, that's, a, that's the bonus. We get to talk to business owners. We get to talk to members, people that live here in the community, real estate agents, developers. And it's all the same story. There are more people visiting Chafee County this summer than ever before. Real estate agents are busier here in Chafee County more so than ever. And when I hear these things, I reflect on our mission. And when I got here, I knew it was important. I knew the role that I had here was critical. But now with this pressure, that gives me so much hope and so much motivation to get our mission into higher gear here at the Conservancy because it is more important now than ever and that is a cold, hard truth. At this time, we really can see as clear as, clear as a bell that these things need protected and that if we don't protect them, we're looking at a whole different way of life. We're looking at strip malls. We're looking at traffic and overcrowding, and we can see it coming. And so we need to coalesce as a community and make sure that we protect and cherish the values we have so that in 20 years, in 50 years, we have a nice representation of our valley that we can support and love and continue to nourish. And to do that, we need everybody.
The high country is a place where, where I really call home, uh, the Alpine, subalpine. And I was doing a lot of backpacking in the Collegiate Peaks uh, and just got really enamored of this place and uh, found a little trail up here they call the Monarch Crest uh, and got on this bike and then uh, had an experience up there that uh, was just unparalleled, unmatched uh, at, for me at the time. And I knew I was gonna come back here to play and work at some, some point in my life. My name is Adam Bay, I'm the Executive Director of Central Colorado Conservancy. Our mission is to protect the lands and waters and quality of life here in Central Colorado as our communities face uh, growth and, and, and pressure here. And we do that through a number of different strategies, conservation easements and land acquisitions, that pure protection piece that we're protecting these places forever. Our mission here is more important now than ever. Uh, I, I, I take it very personally. I know I'm part of the problem. I'm part of the growth here in Chafee. And it's going to continue. It's, it's you, you can't, you can't stop that growth. People will, will come here because they, they, they're looking for the same thing that I was looking for when I came. And if that wasn't enough, now we have COVID. That reality, uh, I think, has caused a major shift in a lot of people. And people are looking towards these natural, open spaces and landscapes and these rural communities, places of comfort, places of hope place to come and unwind and, and, and relax and, and, and remember who we are as, as humans and as, as, as people of this place and, and, and reconnect um, with a landscape that gives us so much. You know, an organization like the Conservancy, our impact is, is so massive when you, when you think about what we're up against. And we can really only do that with the support of our, our communities, our donors, our members, our collaborators and partners um, in this landscape. As a director of a, a smaller conservation organization, you think about all of the challenges uh, that were, were, are stacked up against us and uh, it can get demoralizing at times. But when I reflect and think about my team here our work, the, the, the most dedicated, passionate conservationists I've ever met, uh, going to work every day uh, to do something positive here. Every arena you can imagine uh, are chipping in on this collaborative conservation effort. Uh, to me, that gives me incredible hope for the future. And uh, I just, I look forward to the next 10, 20, 30 years down the road where I can work with such great people uh, for positive impact on this land. Conservation's important now, you know, word because of growth. Um, we're seeing visitation grow by almost 15% a year until this year when it's almost 100%. Right now we have 4 million a year. Six years from now we have 8 million and we have 30% more population. I mean, those are massive changes and all that growth, of course, comes with some wonderful things, some new restaurants and new neighbors and all that. Um, but it also comes with some real impacts. I mean, in the last five years, Chafee County has lost 15% of its ag lands in just five years. So if we stay on that pace, in six years, half of these lands are gone. I mean, they're gone. And when they're gone, they're gone forever. You can't bring them back. Um, so now's, now's the time, right? I mean, this is a tipping point for this place. Um, we talked about this being like one of the last cool places in Colorado, the last original places. I mean, I feel like we have a window in the next five years to, to put in place protections and programs and actions to keep it that way. Um, or, or to lose it, kind of to, you know, with the risk of becoming a bit like everywhere else. So now's the time. Right.
I am Lucy Waldo and I'm Conservation Director for Central Colorado Conservancy. I came from Maryland and uh, when I was 18 I came out to Colorado State University, go Rams, and I met a guy from Leadville so ended up in this part of the, of the state and I've basically been here for more than 30 years and that's been great. I get to work with landowners who want to conserve their land and water, so that's um, a really wonderful job. And I also do a lot of grant writing so that we can pay them to conserve their land and water. We still have a chance here in uh, this part of Colorado to not become like the I-70 corridor. When I go to the I-70 corridor, I feel like I'm visiting a shopping mall kind of experience. And, and I don't feel that here, and, and I, I, I want to hold on to that. And I think the more things change, the more precious this is, this um, small town community where people come and stay and raise their families. And, and um, that's the kind of thing that, that I think is just um, um, incredibly valuable and, and hard to find. Today I'm, I'm standing on um, Lillian Bender's conservation easement and um, Lillian chose to conserve this place. She was raised here. Um, her family owned it and still owns it. The Little Arkansas, the South Arkansas comes through the property. Um, there's wild turkeys, great horned owls, um, bears, even a cougar at one point caught on a wildlife cam. Just incredible wildlife habitat. And, and this is pretty much in the heart of Poncha Springs, which is booming right now. So this is, uh, becomes more and more precious each, each day. Central Colorado Conservancy is so incredibly important because we've been discovered and we'd like to keep these gems like Lillian's property and uh, so many others that we're, we're working on in the area the way that they are. Um, for future generations. I'm really psyched right now because we have a lot of really amazing and large projects. Coming up in Chafee, we've uh, Centerville Ranch, so we're working on 650 acre easement there. We're working right next to Centerville Ranch. Um, we're really pleased that the neighboring landowner decided to also do a conservation easement. So that's Jay Wilson's Tri Lazy W Ranch, which is amazing wildlife habitat between, basically between the Collegiate Peaks and Browns Canyon National Monument. So just an incredible gem right there. We bought this ranch in 1969 as a division of our company. We were, were uh, commercial and industrial painting contractors. And I sold that business in 1995 to move out here full time and do what I've always loved to do. My name is Jay Wilson, it's Tri Lazy W Ranch. Uh, this is a cow calf operation. We've had this ranch since 1969. We also put up a lot of hay as well on the ranch. It's a, a great way to spend uh, uh, to spend your uh, life. I had thought about doing several things relative to the ranch, maybe in the in the way of development. After talking and seeing what they did down at Centerville Ranch, which is just south of us. It made sense for me to go ahead and reconsider what I looked at uh, initially as far as uh, conservation easements. Uh, the biggest thing about the conservation easement for me was that, that that land back there will stay the way it is forever and ever. It'll be uh, strictly grazing land uh, for cattle, uh, cattle operation, and, and that's the way we wanted it. Uh, the other thing that we've accomplished right now is by developing 
uh, this into a conservation easement. Now we now have a, a wildlife corridor, and that's really important because of the the number of uh, of wildlife that we have in this area. So the importance really was to uh, not only create a, a lasting legacy, and I thought that that after really looking at everything, that that was really a an opportunity that that we would have to leave. Uh, for the people of Chafee County in the state of Colorado that might come back out here again, and also for my families. All right. Here we are, huh? Browns Canyon in the background there. Yeah, you can see the river crossing through. So the Tri-Lazy W Ranch is adjacent to the Centerville Ranch. Mm -hmm. And um, as you know, that one's moving along. And Jay, being the neighbor, said, hey, maybe if Centerville is doing an easement, maybe it would make sense for me to do an easement over here too. So um, so fortunately, we we have both of them together and they're, they'll form this big buffer um, right next to Browns Canyon National Monument. And, uh, yeah, that's excellent. You know, Lucy, what I, what I love about that and Jay and Jeff talking together, you know, for us doing these easements, as you know, incredibly difficult even just to get into that initial conversation with some folks. Sure. And so as much as we can have neighbors talking to each other mm -hmm. and kind of selling our story or selling the conservation story to each other, um, I mean, that's, that's just great. That makes mm -hmm. our, our work easy. Yeah, and, and we really, um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we really, we need a, like a, a critical mass of people who will do conservation easements yeah. so that we can kind of create an ecosystem of conserved ranches. Right. Um, because there's still agriculture in this area um, in central Colorado. And, you know, part of my work, certainly our, our work, is to help the ag folks be able to stay here and, and keep that part of our economy going and um for sure and uh and obviously this is incredible wildlife habitat too so yeah you know what i love about the the easements here is we're hitting on so many different values here i mean you heard jay talking uh about the wildlife corridor you know coming from the high country up here in the peaks down crossing 285 over to to browns canyon and and, and the river of course uh, you got a beautiful pinion forested landscape here that he's done some enhancements on. So you're, you're kind of bringing back diversity in grasses and forbs mm -hmm. here, which is good for all wildlife, good for cattle. And then over in Jeff's place, you know, not a rancher, he's a real estate developer, but uh, interested in protecting a key little wetland site that we've been out to a few times, seen some mm -hmm. great bird life. Mm -hmm. But I imagine for Jeff, it's you know, the, the tax benefit as well from putting on an easement is, is good for his operations as well, as well as, of course, listening to the, the community about yeah how they feel about development out here. Yeah, so. I think he, he got that message from the community that they are really glad that he's going to protect that green valley that people love seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then Jay was like, well, okay, maybe I should do it too. Maybe the time's right for me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it's cool stuff how we're building a group of conservation easements yeah. in the area. Hearing the story of how Centerville really inspired Jay and the easement that he's now in the process of doing on his property, I thought, Gosh, how cool is that, that our organization isn't just working on these single projects, but these projects are also having a ripple effect across our community. And these ranchers are talking and people in the community are talking and they're, they're finding how important and how critical these easements are to our community in so many different ways. And just getting to hear Jay talk about his experience and how much he cares about his land, um, 
just again as as a as a new employee um, focusing on a new mission that's new to my heart and new to my life uh, everything really came together you know we've got a we've got a little cemetery up here uh, at Centerville and if you ever have a chance to go up there you can see some of the old-time ranchers and farmers in this area that were that uh, um, are, are buried up there. And when I go back and I look at some of the old uh, uh, deeds uh, and the water rights and that stuff and see some of the names and that stuff, that's, that's truly a big legacy for here. And that was one of the, one of the things that really kind of tipped the, the scales for me as far as having us having a legacy. It's joining a ranching family and community that's been here since the 1850s and 40s, and now being part of that, and uh, eventually I'll be up there with everybody else at, at Centerville and popping a beer and having a big time. So we, I look forward to that uh, that someday as well. We could have we could have had a, a different kind of story happening out here. When, if you recall, those those first conversations or, or what we heard from from Centerville is about 950 acres of development mm -hmm. um, which after you know talking talking with them and, and, and talking about the easement got it down to 300 acres I mean that's a that's a huge that's a huge win and, and uh, as you know uh, the housing boom here and the ability to subdivide and, and build is is it's always there it's always a threat for, for, for us as we do our work but uh, it's great to see it get dropped down to 300 acres and then have the added benefit of having that peer-to-peer, landowner-to-landowner communication with uh, Jeff and Jay where Jay's putting a, an easement down here. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good deal. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too. We pick those spots of the highest value and still allow some level of development because we know folks owning this land are have to make some kind of living off of it. You know, this only happens with uh, with, with support of, of folks from all walks of life, not not just from the ag community, not just from folks in this valley, but uh, we need support from, from all around to, to protect these places. If we're not conserving it now and we're not thoughtfully thinking about like how we're developing, what we're conserving, how we're sustaining working lands and family ranches to support all of these things we value and love, like it will be too late. <laughs> the Western Governors Association just put out this article, The Mass Exodus for the West. And I mean, people are <laughs> fleeing rural, you know, urban areas for the rural West. Colorado's top on that list even before that I mean just the development pressure and population increases in the state and I look at other places in Colorado whether it's you know to pick on Summit County or Aspen and they had this at one point and so it feels to me like there isn't really a future time when it will be possible to do so anymore. We've seen a lot of people um, from the Front Range of Colorado who've been calling me lately and said, hey, we, after COVID, we're kind of rethinking everything. Um, we're working from home indefinitely now. A lot of companies have put work from home policies in place. And so they're, they're saying, hey, we've had our eye we've, on Central Colorado. We travel there a lot for vacations and we're ready to pull the trigger and move there. So there's a lot of people who have, it's been in the back of their mind and this just kind of pushed them over the edge and said, hey, let's do it. So I'm Clark. I'm Courtney. And we are with uh, Worth Clark Realty, a um, company based out of St. Louis, and we run the Colorado branch here out of Buena Vista, Colorado. Over the last several years, we've seen obviously growth every year in the market, more and more people moving here. 
and um, especially since COVID, you know, it's been um, unlike anything we've ever seen. Colorado just announced that they've had the highest number of home sales on record after COVID. So that's really affecting us here too. Our inventory is really low. People continue to move here seeking this quality of life and looking to work from home um, because they can now. When we moved here originally, we didn't have children. Um, and after living here, you know, about six months, we were like, yeah, we think we're gonna be here full time. And then I was like, I wanna raise a family here. And we're totally seeing that um, with our clients moving in, um, like bringing their kids, like they wanna take their kids hiking, they wanna get out and do all the things and they wanna be here. I think during COVID, people felt trapped in the cities and they are looking for a way to improve their life. People are focusing on their houses a lot more than they used to. They're focusing on what kind of rooms they have. People are thinking through things a lot more and they're thinking about, hey, if I'm working from home, why not live in somewhere I enjoy? And when you're stuck in Denver, somewhere where you can see the mountains, but you can't get to them or it takes three hours of traffic to get there, people are rethinking that and saying, hey, let's relocate. Let's move to the mountains and enjoy a quality of life where we can hike after work or we can do whatever we want to do for recreation. But um, I do think too, we need to be keep some common sense with that and find ways to preserve what we have all known, come to know and love here. I think as we see more and more people come, we kind of tend to lose the touch with who we are as a community sometimes and things get hectic and you see people driving crazy and leaving trash on the trails and things like that. So I think it's important that, um, that we, you know, manage this growth so that it's sustainable and we protect the local community that we've, that we've been used to. We, it's really important to us that we encourage just a sustainability factor that things can, we can continue to enjoy Buena Vista and Chafee County and the surrounding areas like we have in the past. As we continue to grow, it also brings in new challenges to the area, things that we wouldn't have been a challenge in the past, especially thinking about water and land and the many challenges that that presents with more and more load on the ecosystem. And so I think it's important, you know, to have these organizations like Central Colorado Conservancy that are helping keep an eye on that and do proactive things to, to watch out for um, the, the land and the water and the resources that we have here. I'm Bruce Goforth. I'm the primary founder and first president of Land Trust of the Upper Arkansas, which is now Central Colorado Conservancy. Melissa and I uh, were married back in the early 70s, and, uh, but we were looking for an opportunity to get back to rural Colorado, and uh, we knew about this area. We were able to come here in 96. We just felt like this would be a good area for me to finish out my career over the next eight or ten years and uh, we could retire here and, uh, and we would rather do so here and get out of the rat race on the front range. <laughs> we for a while had been engaged in a uh, land use planning process here doing all the same things that are being talked about now and um, it just seemed to me that um, rather than have growth occur in some haphazard way, it really felt like if we could work with ranchers and have them do conservation easements on their lands, then um, some of these scenic vistas and the wildlife and uh, the real characteristics of the area, the cultural uh, history through some of our um, heritage sites and might um, be preserved where they would be lost otherwise. And the, the great thing about it when you're dealing with uh, doing conservation easements is uh, people can continue doing largely what they've always done on the land. So I feel really good about the work that's being done now. Um, you know, that's finally resulting in more of a community activity <laughs> because when we first started there was uh, very few people knew what conservation easements were. But in this day and time, uh, you know, 25, 30 years later, <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel really great. This is a legacy that will far outlast me or my children and go into the future, and that makes me feel really good.
I'm Buffy Lim. I am Central Colorado Conservancy's Watershed Restoration Specialist. After growing up in Colorado, I went um, to Middlebury College in Vermont, which was a great experience, but I knew right afterwards that I wanted to get back to Colorado. And I worked um, at Breckenridge on their ski patrol for a few years and got to do some great field biology jobs in the summer. I studied grizzly bears in Montana and tropical forests in Costa Rica and sea turtles in Hawaii. And then I went back to graduate school and got a master's in ecology up at CSU in Fort Collins. And that's where I met my husband. And we worked together after grad school at Boulder County Open Space. And then for our honeymoon, we went um, and did the Peace Corps in Mexico. We had a great experience um, working in the Sierra Gorda Biosphere Reserve. So in my role at the Conservancy, I get to coordinate the Arkansas Headwaters Wetland Focus Area Committee, which is really important work. Riparian areas and wetlands are nature's system for filtering and cleaning and storing and conserving our fresh water. And so um, it's been a really neat opportunity to bring together wetland scientists, landowners, folks from natural resource management agencies, and really everyone who cares about our wetlands and riparian areas and the headwaters here. Another one of my favorite parts of my job is working with our Hands for Lands volunteers. It's been a lot of fun to get out on some of our local ranches and help ranchers with ditch cleaning, fence projects, whatever needs they have. Um, our private lands and our ranch lands in particular provide so much to the community and so it's a great way that we can get out and help um, local ranchers and give a little back. We also work at some of the state wildlife areas here locally, like at Sands Lake and do stream bank plantings. And so that's been a great way for me to get to know some of our members and get out on the land together. It's so exciting to see the success that Central Colorado Conservancy is having um, and all of the great land protection work we've been able to accomplish and knowing that we are conserving some of these landscapes for the long term. Equally important in my mind is restoration. Colorado has lost 50% of its wetlands and so we also need to think about how we can restore and enhance habitat that's been lost. One of those great opportunities for restoration that we've identified is in the Badger Creek watershed. A hundred square mile watershed just east of here where we've been getting some really exciting riparian restoration demonstration projects on the ground that are growing that green ribbon of habitat along the creek and also doing a lot to capture sediment and improve the water quality coming out of Badger Creek. Wetlands and riparian areas are really the green jewels of our landscape. We have, you know, only 2% of our landscape is comprised of wetlands and riparian areas, and yet over 75% of wildlife species depend on them at some point in their life cycle. So they really are the biodiversity hotspots and they're disproportionately important, um, especially here in the headwaters. We really impact the whole Arkansas basin, which goes all the way out to Kansas. Um, these healthy headwaters restoration projects really are good for water quality and quantity for the whole basin. So this is really important work that we're doing out here. It was really exciting when I got into that first meeting where that Buffy was leading and Mark Beardsley was there, NRCS, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, all these folks were there, a couple of landowners were there. I thought, wow, this is, this is a bunch of people meeting each other where they're at. 
And, and if we want to, to really e enhance our impact, expand our impact beyond just set boundaries on private lands, we need to work across those public spaces as well. And uh, you can't do that unless they're all in the room together talking about those things. The Badger Creek Watershed Partnership is one of my favorite parts of my job. Um, it's just a great group of folks. A long history of erosion, the Texas cattle drives used to come through here, and so what we think were broad slope wetlands were really channelized into a narrow creek, so we're trying now to reverse that process, to slow that water down, spread it out, create a wider riparian area, a river escape or a streamscape rather than a, a single thread channel. The whole idea of this project is to turn this water shed into a water catchment. We want to capture every drop of water here and have it infiltrate, create this fertile soil, create this green vegetation, and really be able to slow down the flows, create more wildlife habitat. So this is, um, it's working really well. You can see it in action out here. Instead of a little single thread channel whipping through here, we've got the water really meandering and moving around and spreading out. The whole water table's coming up. I'm Mark Beardsley, um, and together with Jessica Duran and David Sutherland, we're Ecometrics. I was introduced to Badger Creek about 15 years ago, and, and, and I was enamored with this watershed. It was huge. It's the Wild West out here, but it has so much potential. And, and it's fun to have now, under the Conservancy's leadership, to have this active group really starting to get some things done from all walks of life, the people that live here, the people that make their living here, um, to the people downstream that run reservoirs <laughs> that are impacted by the sediment that comes from here. Most people's perception of a creek is is this one little strip this little channel but the creek's not just this little string it's this whole riverscape badger creek is a big wide system a big complex system and this channel right here is really more of a drainage ditch this should be a big wetland complex the water should be mostly moving under the ground and flowing through this system you know hyperically underneath underneath the soil and through the soil. It shouldn't be draining out like this. So the idea with this restoration was to kind of, not so much redesign this whole system, but just trying to do some like kind of gentle treatments to kind of get it to recuperate itself. And where we just walk through that channelized zone, um, what we're trying to do is break that up. We, we, we're, we're trying to, to keep that from draining this whole wetland system. So to do that, this is really simple, about as low tech as you can get. We just took sod from the side of the creek and built these little speed bumps to kind of just break up this channel that used to flow through here. And the water's still moving through the system, but now we're kind of forcing it around and forcing it through the ground, um, raising the water table up. And that's the reason some of these plants can start to flourish. I can. See, it's wet out here now, squishy. And these are wetland plants. These sedges are, are loving it. They're eating it up. They're, um, we want these to flourish. These are gonna be the roughness that will help control erosion during the big floods, the big flash floods. The, I mean, this should have been, Badger Creek should have been great habitat for boreal toads and leopard frogs and some of the other amphibians that used to be common out here and are now rare and even on the verge of extinction. So yeah, hopefully we can restore some of that. And uh, you know, it's really about keeping, letting the water move through this system more like it naturally did and support the natural plants that would have been here and all that life that depends on those things. Yeah, hopefully if we get that system up and running then it'll just keep perpetuating and getting better and better.
Buffy is a passionate person and she really cares about the things she cares about and it becomes obvious to everyone. Um, it, it's actually really awesome and it's very inspiring. The guys filming this right now are going to walk away with an appreciation for Badger Creek, which they had never heard of before. And it's because, because Buffy is so excited about it. It's, it's contagious. You know that if you know her. <laughs>
So my role at the Conservancy, if I could have designed my role, I couldn't have designed it any better than um, being the manager of agriculture programs for the Conservancy. My husband and I kind of joke, he loves raising cattle for the sake of raising cattle. I love raising cattle for the conservation and the positive impact they have on the land. And so we were looking for a place um, where we could not only do agriculture, but be a part of the community and broaden that community beyond um, the immediate to bring others here. We just feel like it's such an important piece right now to connect people to the land. We wanted to be able to not only do conservation ranching, but share it with um, those that don't have access to it, share it with the young people, be available to the next generation of farmers and ranchers to come out here. So as a rancher, uh, conservation is really important to us. It's part of what we do naturally, um, and you know, then there, then we also make conscious choices. Maybe that's a conservation easement if that works for your particular ranch or situation. And and I think the opportunity to go beyond conservation easements and develop programs that also support um, ranching and, and farming agriculture. That's what I love about Central Colorado Conservancy is they're innovative, we're innovative, and we find these new ways to go beyond and find new programs. And one of the ones that I am really lucky to get involved in is the Conservation Connection. And so I get to go out and visit with ranchers who are also my friends and neighbors, part of my community, see what they're doing on their property, um, see the different, many different conservation practices that they're doing, and I get to learn from them and hopefully get to share some ideas and programs with them that I may know of that are available through the Conservancy or other opportunities. So I love that program. I feel really lucky to be a part of it, and I'm looking forward to doing more with that program. So the Chafee Conservation Connection Program is a, an additional tool to conservation easements. The program offers a five-year agreement rather than a perpetual conservation easement for ranchers who would like to conserve their properties but aren't at the point where they're able to do um, a permanent conservation easement. So they sign up for a five-year agreement and in exchange they, they get payments during those five years and this is funded by the Chafee Common Ground. We were, we were the first ones to put our ranch in Chafee County into an easement. And, uh, and I know we got a lot of flack from kind of both sides. Some people thought it was the best thing in the world and some people thought we were complete idiots. When, you're, when you own a bunch of land, you're usually land rich and money poor. And so, you know, the way you get rich is by selling the land and, and um, you know, we love it so much, like I said, that there's not enough money in the world to buy it. And, um, and so any, any little programs that'll help the, help the uh, ranchers, you know, stay afloat and maybe do some improvements on their property, which, you know, you just, you always have enough money to kind of squeeze by, but there's always those fences need fixed, or we need a new, you know, new set of corrals, or our loadout, you know, falling down, or there's, you know, lots of ditch work that has to be done on a yearly basis. Um, you know, so it's just, it's a lot to keep up with, and, and uh, having a, a group, a conservancy group to help, you know, help conserve um, that, that way of life. Um, for the enjoyment of everybody and wildlife and you know and, and it's where our food comes from you know I, and it's, I guess you can grow some vegetables and different things on your porch and but uh, pretty tough to grow beef there <laughs> so um, I think it's a, it's a it's an important very important thing so if we roll all the way back to 2016 we had two conversations um, one, we had one with the community, and what we heard in that is that 97% of people, 97% said that working man lands matter to their quality of life. And then we went and talked to ranchers, and what we found is that nine out of 10 ranchers want to keep their working lands working. That's what they want to do. Um, but when you ask them what the challenges is, they said that the challenge is the economics. The challenge is all these new people coming and the impacts they have. Um, the challenge is keeping these working lands working and passing them to my kids. So we had this idea that came up out of the ranching community of, you know, what about a program that helps the 97% of people that love working lands? Let's give them a way 
to support those working lands um, directly. As someone who grew up in agriculture, someone who's still in agriculture as a rancher, I really understand the challenges that uh, ranchers and farmers and anybody really who's owning and managing land are facing these days. Um, and it's, it's a lot. It's anything from the weather, which we can't do a lot about, to um, development or these different things that we actually can do something about. And Conservation Connection is something that we can do to support working lands and keep them working and support the ranchers who are out there every day working on things that everybody gets to enjoy and appreciate. We've talked so much about quality of life and what that means to people in our area and that's part of our quality life, getting outside, enjoying these viewscapes. Um, and then water is such a critical element um, for all of us and the work that ag does that keeps that water on the land, um, the work through irrigation and growing crops and grazing. Grazing is another way that we keep the land healthy. Those animals are out there moving the soil around, trampling it in, um, fertilizing it in their own way, keeping things growing, um, keeping it green. And of course, the impact that it has for the wildlife. I was just out on one of our Conservation Connection ranches and there's a grove of willows where a small herd of elk comes every year, has their babies, raises their babies in, in that protected little willow um, grove where they know they're safe and they come back year after year. Um, there's a wetlands on that ranch that um, has something like eight species um, that are on the species of concern list. And so there's so much that these ranches are doing and so many practices that they do. So the, the cool thing about Conservation Connection is that we had probably 20 ranchers that came together at the table uh, for almost two years, meeting after meeting, um, working together, figuring out what this might, might look like, and really rolling up their sleeves. And now um, we're seeing it come to fruition. It's really a, a state-leading program, of the idea of, of giving ranchers a hand and keeping these working lands working. There's a lot of love that goes into, it sounds again a little corny maybe, but um, there's a lot of love that goes into caring for the land, stewarding the land. Um, and so this is a way of doing exactly what the program says, connecting the community with the agriculture lands, getting to know one another, and what we each bring to the community and bring to the quality of, of everyone's lives. So I'm super passionate about this program. I love it, I love what it does. Um, I think it's so valuable to keep the water and the land connected, and this is one way that we can do it. Well, I think the Conservancy is ideally um, set up and ideally located to address these issues, and I think it has evolved into a really powerful organization to really impact these things in a positive way. And that's probably a mixture of the staff being so skillful. I think it's just really astonishing how capable all of you folks are in terms of what you do. Um, and that there's a really a motivation in this community to support that. And so, you know, the mission of the Conservancy has moved beyond just saving pieces of property to really recognizing those bigger values, protecting the forests, the waters, the wildlife, and really thinking about all those big things that we want to keep alive. Back in St. Louis, I had a business uh, called Good Meets World um, that connected businesses to nonprofits that they wanted to support uh, and allowed them to give back with every sale or every purchase that was made within the business. And I actually ended up selling that uh, company in June of last year. And after that, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something in the nonprofit area, but I wanted to focus on one mission solely. And my wife and I uh, knew we wanted to leave St. Louis, but we weren't sure where we wanted to go. We bought one-way tickets to Hawaii uh, on a whim and thought we were going to move there. And we visited uh, some family we have here in BV. 
and we're just completely blown away by Central Colorado and its beauty and its community and its atmosphere and wildlife. It was, it was like nothing we had experienced. And we came out here and I thought, I wanna live here. I wanna work here. I wanna do something in this beautiful valley. So at the Conservancy, as the Director of Development and Communication, it's my job to make sure that our mission can continue. I work with our, our donors. Uh, I work with our members, our business partners. I make sure that they know exactly what we do, how we do it, and what the impact is if they continue to support us. But I also get to work with the incredible people in our office, like Lucy and Julie and Buffy and Natalie and Adam, to really learn about their programs and what's needed um, to accomplish their mission. Um, so it's, it's this incredible combination of getting to work with this amazing community uh, and this incredibly supportive staff to make sure that we have the funding that we need, um, that the community knows what we're doing and how, and again, what that impact is if they support us. Two weeks after we moved here, um, we found out we were pregnant. Um, with our firstborn, which is now our little daughter, Winnie. And we were in a new town, a very small town, uh, with very little family, no friends, and hardly any connections. And we really didn't know what to do. We kind of freaked out for a second. Um, but within a handful of days after just reaching out at, at our church and through a couple other um, local connections, we felt more comfortable here than I think we would have at home uh, in St. Louis. And that's when it really hit us that this isn't just a beautiful place, it's a very special place. And we knew that we were brought here for a reason, not only for this job and for us to live in this beautiful place, but also to start our family. When I think about the mission of the Conservancy, there's this urgency inside of me right now because I see every single day with the work that we do how important it is that we protect this place now more than ever. Raising a family in this area uh, has really done a lot for me when it comes to our mission at work because it's not just Courtney and I that are enjoying these views. It's not just Courtney and I that are walking down by the river or waking up and watching these gorgeous sunsets. It's us and our daughter. And uh, our children could potentially raise their children here. And when you look at the Conservancy's mission, again, it is forever. When we put a, an easement on a property, that property is gonna be protected long after we're all gone. So the fact that we can have this impact now knowing that it has a ripple effect into life after life after life into the future i mean it's almost indescribable um how that makes me feel when i am able to go to work one of the things that i enjoy so much with this role is the stories that i get to hear uh, it is so fascinating and if you just if you take you know, John Andrick and his property on the Ark and what's going on there I had a chance to sit down with John and hear his story and and why he's preserving that land and the story of him and his son Sean who recently passed um, and they had planned to develop that land um, into an easement and and do another one and another one and another one. And, and unfortunately his son passed. And, and to hear that story from John, that this isn't his legacy anymore. It's his son's legacy. That just hit me so deep. And through the Sean Andrick Memorial Wildlife Area and that project, just to be able to know our organization is, is helping a, a guy like John have the name of his son live on. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, what more is there than that when it comes to impact? So here we are at the southern end of Sean Andrick Memorial Wildlife Area. We've got some residual Wild West, Old West feel here. And if you see where we're sitting, 
right here on the bank of the Arkansas River. We got a currently defunct railway here. I believe it was Union Pacific ran that. We got an old stagecoach trail here. Both of these built in the late 1800s. We're in the middle of cultural history right here. I mean, we've got stories of stagecoach robbers and train robbers. That's a rich cultural history that, that we all share being in this place. And it's, it's exciting to protect land and resources and water and wildlife habitat and all of that. But we're protecting those stories as well. We're protecting that cultural heritage. This is, in my opinion, and many others, this is the choicest piece of property on the whole Arkansas uh, for, for fishing, for scenery, for wildlife corridors, for winter range. It is a very special place. This is year-round habitat for a, for a local bighorn sheep population that they don't even go to the high country. They live in these rocks right along here. I've got educational background in, in wildlife biology, fisheries, timber management, range management, and, uh, and outdoor recreation. In the 70s, I started becoming so burnt out with all the environmental losses that I, I, I quit the federal government. Uh, by then, I had worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Outdoor Recreation, and I went to northeastern Colorado and I started building wetlands. I started on this project about eight, year, eight years ago, and it took me several years to put together several of these properties, which I didn't think I'd be able to get this many, but I got half of them. And now we're getting it, we're just this close to getting it into getting it protected by, you know, the conservancy. This may be the culmination of my life's accomplishments, and it's much deeper than that. It was also my son's, and uh, I lost my son a few months ago, and uh, now, now this, uh, all that's up in the air, but, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to, but not me, somebody else will be able to keep getting the stuff into public ownership. We know how an important this place is and this effort is to the Andrick family and how important it was to Sean. And I could hear that in our conversations that we'd have just negotiating the, the sale of these properties. Uh, so we're very happy that we can forever uh, respect and memorialize Sean's name here on this stretch. When all of these properties are, are strung together, we're talking about close to two miles of the Arkansas River that's protected, uh, which is no small thing. Yeah, this project is, is different for the Conservancy in the sense that most of our protected spaces are on private lands, are through conservation easements and, and straight up fee simple acquisitions. Uh, and that's, that's really the bread and butter, the traditional approach for, for many land trusts. Those places that we protected or have protected in the past, our 36 plus easements, 5,000 acres throughout this valley, there's, there's no public access. And that's been negotiated with those landowners to protect that space forever and protect the conservation value. It's different here. We want people to come here. You, the, you look at this terrain and you're not gonna see much value for agricultural production, but you are gonna see incredible value for recreation and just enjoyment of this resource, anglers. My name's Scott Beeler and I'm a fly fishing guide for Arc Anglers, a fly shop that's been serving this valley for about 30 years. Go back to the 1980s though when I was learning how to fly fish, I also worked with the Division of Wildlife on the drainage next door, the Roaring Fork. And we would come over to raft here, but we never considered fishing this river because the fishery really just wasn't worth it. The mines up above us were leaching heavy metals into the water, and that was bad for the bugs that these fish depend on. And there were some fish here, but not anything worth making a trip for. Fast forward to today, and the Arkansas River is the longest stretch of gold metal trout water in the state of Colorado and it got that way because they cleaned up several of the biggest mines. They cut about 85% of the heavy metals that were coming into the water out. The bugs came back. 
the diversity of macroinvertebrates in this stream is phenomenal. And there's now mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, midges, in quantities that it serves up a buffet for the trout that live in here. And now it's one of my favorite areas to uh, fish because there are just so many fish per acre in the river. We want to provide a public space for citizens of Lake, Chafee, other satellite counties and communities to come here, come with their families, have a, have a quick, easy access off the highway, and enjoy a gold medal river that a generation ago, you wouldn't want to really dip your feet in there too much. And if you were fishing, you'd probably be putting that one back. <laughs> the provision of outdoor space, uh, recreational opportunities, just a, a place to be outside for, for families and, and the people of this community, especially in, in the current COVID reality that we find ourselves in. Uh, these open spaces are, are so important now more than ever. You know, when you look around you, literally we're surrounded by the tallest mountains in the state of Colorado. Albert and Massive are right over there. All of that high country is public land. Most of it's forest service. In the summertime, it's great wildlife habitat. The elk, the bighorn sheep, deer, moose, all go up there. Knowing that there won't be homes or development along these stretches of the Arkansas River that Central Colorado Conservancy has worked to preserve for uh, the benefit of Lake County residents and our visitors is uh, invaluable to me. And, and it's, it's incredible. We have to remind ourselves how lucky we are and how lucky this community is and our, and our neighbors um, to have that kind of access and to be able to get into that space and enjoy nature, um, have kind of that, that, mental, that mental health component um, is really large and really important, especially in these times. Access to public space, access to this river, to have this two mile section set aside forever for everyone in this community and everyone who visits this community to come anytime they want to visit and enjoy, it's, it's something special. You've seen the numbers, and, and I've said it before, you, you can't stop what's coming. These, these people are, are coming here in droves. Everything in the valley was shut down for a month or two this spring. And then when it opened up, a little bit of a floodgate opened up. And that's kind of a mixed feeling for us because we kind of view this as our own little mountain paradise. And there's probably more people camping and fishing in this valley this summer than I've ever seen here. But those are people who are coming out of big cities like Denver or even driving up from Houston, Texas. And for those people to get out of that urban landscape and to spend some time in this mountain environment, even though it feels a little crowded to me, the flip side of that is those people are getting an appreciation of the value of open space that we have. You know, I don't want to get into politics, but when issues of land preservation come up that they can vote on, if they've had a chance to experience this firsthand, to see some of those elk and how amazing they are, watch a moose feeding in, in a willowed area like this, they kind of value this habitat and they value this open space. And I think that makes a difference in what happens in this country. And as the restrictions and pressures of, of COVID and, and just population growth in general and, and, and migration to this great state of Colorado continues, you're gonna see more and more pressure on these beautiful natural spaces. And, and what would this stretch of river look like dotted with condos? It would be a very different feel, a very different experience here. And you know, at the Conservancy, we're not necessarily anti-development, but we want it in the right places. And we don't think it would be appropriate on this stretch of river. We want this protected for future generations to come and enjoy, to experience that, that quality of life that we all experience living here as, as residents. One of the things I love about what the Central Colorado Conservancy does is they work with other entities, they work with private landholders, Sometimes, like this spot, they provide public access, and other times, they just help a ranch stay in ranching. They help a family hold on to that land, and by doing that, 
they protect that wildlife habitat that our life really kind of re revolves around seeing animals, finding animals, and, and bringing people in. When I bring people in on trips, not only do I get to teach them about the fishing that's here, but I kind of give them a general ecology lesson on how this whole system works. So, you know, from my family standpoint, we kind of thrive in this valley because of the wildlife. And so preserving the habitat really preserves the essence of what's really important about this valley to us. What is your favorite memory of uh, living in Colorado? <laughs> oh boy, I will have to think about that one for a minute. Do you have a favorite memory uh, in Colorado? Got about an hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. You know, um, there's so many. I think the good memories are can be simple ones. You know, there's powder days and catching fish and and just living in town and going to the Fibark parade or whatever but I think it's the culmination of all that it's it's having this familiar area and knowing that you're a part of it every day I think is is the best ongoing memory and that's why it's important to keep it keep it so wonderful for future generations I mean, that's pretty tough. I mean, every, every day creates its own favorite memories. I mean, I think what I like most about living here is the, the mountains, how on the one hand they're solid and unchanging, and on the other hand you look at them every day and they look a little bit different in the light. And... Sleeping outside along the Roaring Fork River um, near Old Snowmass when I was a kid with a family that we knew and used to spend a lot of time, and just the it was magic. It was, you know, you could hear the river, the, the views were incredible, the wildlife, and the stars at night. Okay, well I have a lot, <laughs> but um, let's see, at least one of my favorite memories um, is that we had some friends visit us from the East Coast a couple years ago in September, and we went up to hike Mount Albert, and we were hiking through just the most beautiful, aspen groves and then there was a whole period of time where we were just being sleeted on and it was windy and terrible and it felt like an actual real kind of mountaineering expedition and then um, you know you get to the top and you're just on top of the world. So um, most every night when we go out and take an evening walk right around sunset or after sunset we see this beautiful sky of mixed colors. Um, as far as the eye can see mixtures of white and gray and pink and red and, and uh, orange and purple and it's just breathtaking. And for me it's just a beautiful way to close the day and so I oftentimes think of that. Oh, I have a good one. So when I first came to Salida, we moved to our house and my wife was in our bedroom and she started squeaking a little and, Aaron, come here, come here. I said, yeah, yeah, what is it? She said, look, there's a huge bird out on our back patio, and it's got something. So I went out there really quickly, and it was a goshawk with a rabbit right on our back patio. And a goshawk is an indicator of a very healthy old growth forest right where I lived. And that moment was an indicator to me that I was in the right place. It told me that that was a sign that I was right here where I was supposed to be, attracted to wild things, wild places, open spaces, and there it was, right on my back porch. The pristineness, I, I think, and the smell and the stars and the sunsets and sunrises are just, were breathtaking. And um, I think through all of that, I realized that we all possess like, um, the natural five senses, 
but I added a sense to all of that during this, and that was my sense of wonder. I am Julie Richardson, and I work at the Central Colorado Conservancy. I am originally, well, actually born in Washington, D.C., but of Kansas City, I would say, was my home and had the opportunity um, after teaching for 25 plus years um, and raising my family and volunteering to come to Florissant, Colorado. And in Florissant, I was a director at Colorado Outdoor Education Center and bringing a lot of those campers over here just showed me um, another vision of what Colorado is all about and the beauty and the best part of my job is that I work with Adam and Zach and all the program people who have such background and knowledge and then I get to coordinate all of the membership and the volunteers and so I get to see faces and put names together and also to let them know how valued their memberships are. Yeah, there's something about being an angler that is just hard to describe. It's the place I go to just kind of live exactly in the moment. It just so intimately connects you with that moment in time. And particularly on the river, every single moment is unique. Never again will the water flow exactly as it did right then. And that to me is, is a thing of beauty, it's an art. And it just takes me to that moment and everything else drifts away. And it's really peaceful and brings me solace. I'm Aaron Kendall, I'm the board president of Central Colorado Conservancy. I've been working in wildlife, public lands, conservation, natural resources for about two decades now. And when I came to this valley, I immediately wanted to get involved with an organization that was focused on our needs and our community with that bent on natural resources and it didn't take me but a minute to find the conservancy. Growing up in the west I've seen so much change. Places I knew when I was a child just either don't exist or aren't even near the same that they were when I was a kid and you know, a lot of that change hasn't been the best kind of change, but ultimately, I think we all know why we're here. It's for the views, it's for the landscape, it's for the people, it's for the clean air and the clean water, and it's a community value. It's something we all kind of know intrinsically. At this time, we really can see as clear as clear as a bell that these things need protected and that if we don't protect them we're looking at a whole different way of life particularly right now with this worldwide pandemic we have going you know people want to be outside it's really a sanctuary for people who have been cooped up we've already seen a lot of stress and a lot of people wanting to be here but it's illuminating type of values that big wide open landscapes, healthy ecosystems, healthy agricultural lands, what kind of value those add to our society. So to address these challenges, we're going to have to do it collaboratively. We're going to have to be innovative. We're going to have to be creative and unique and think about specifically what it is about Central Colorado that we cherish and how we're willing to give of ourselves to the community to ensure that in 20 years, in 50 years, we have a nice representation of our valley that we can support and love and continue to nourish. And to do that, we need everybody. And we need to get together and figure out how we're gonna do it. And that's where the Conservancy really comes in. We can be the harbinger of good change. We can be the antidote to a lot of the problems that we're facing. 
and we're really poised to do that right now. We've got excellent staff, we've got a vision, we've got energy and passion and drive. We're connected to the community, we're getting more connected every day. We've got a solid base of traditional land users that support what we're doing. We've got more people coming to us all the time with unique opportunities. The Conservancy is the antidote to much of what ails us. It's a very focused organization that's decided that protecting these wide open landscapes, our way of life, our agriculture, our small town charm, and really focusing on that, we've decided that that's the most important thing we can do right now. What a journey, eh? That was that was some fun. I, I had a lot of a lot of fun on this ride. I uh, hope you did too. Uh, it's really pretty amazing uh, when you think of of what the Conservancy has been able to accomplish over the years, from very humble beginnings. You heard Bruce's stories. It was a one-man show, volunteering, and, and just a couple of uh, other key folks in the community who wanted something positive here and made it happen. And, now here we are with three full-time staff, three part-time staff, small size, big impact. Our mission today is, is more important now than, than ever, protecting the lands, waters, way of life here in central Colorado as we face pressure, growth, development uh, at a rate that, that, that might be uh, unpalatable for some and, and we could risk losing quite a bit here. Uh, you've seen what we've been doing out on the land, conservation easements and acquisitions. You've seen Lucy's work out at Arrow Point and Centerville and Tri Lazy W, uh, working with ranching families there. You've seen uh, Zach at home with, with his family and Buffy rummaging around with her kids and still finding time to, to climb up to the Badger Creek watershed and, and do a lot of great partnership work and, and, and watershed restoration work up there. You've seen Natalie out at her ranch as well and, uh, and, and heard a little bit about her work with the Conservation District and providing outreach to our working rural families here. So here at the Conservancy, we wake up every day ready to go to work. We are not passive. We are moving forward. We know that the time for action is now. With your help, we can turn those 5,000 acres of protected land into 50,000, maybe even 500,000. There's a lot that we can do, but we can only do it together. We are your local land trust. We are the Conservancy. Let's protect our home. <laughs>